Hi, I'm Hans Mikkelsson, head of the Broadband Technology Research at Ericsson Research. Today I will tell you a little bit about what we're doing in the fiber access re research, in particular focus on the WM Pond research. I brought some candies here to illustrate the different options you have when you're deploying a fiber access topology. The most straightforward way is actually to use a point to point to point to point links running between end users and a central office. This, this enables each end user to have full protocol uh, independency and bitrate independency, independency between the end users. The other, other approach is to use what we call a point to multi point topology. That is when we're using a common fiber, using a power splitter, and split the optically the traffic to each end users. This means that each end user on this, this topology has to share the capacity and the protocols by the others. Um, by combining these two topologies to taking the best piece from both worlds, we, we will have something we call a WDM PON. Basically, having one fiber carrying different wavelengths, and then have a wavelength splitter splitting out different wavelengths to different end users. This enables each end user to have full protocol uh, transparency. You can run any type of bit rates on any type of fiber. You have an extended reach of the, of the links. You have, um, you have low, low latency, you have low jitter, and uh, you have a full service transparency. And by reducing the low cost, uh, the lower, low cost uh, deployment of the point to, point to multi point topology or the G point topology, you can also gr gradually scale a G point topology by adding more and more wavelengths. So you can go from a G point, and you can add wavelength, and eventually you can reach a full, full WM point solution with its features I met, just mentioned. There are some challenges, of course, with the WDM PON, and one is actually the ONUs, the end user terminals. Here you actually need end user terminals that are uh, not dependent on the wavelength they are associ associated with. So you have to deploy ONUs, which is flexible in that sense, otherwise, you will have a logistic nightmare. So there are three different options to do this. One is to use the, uh, the remotely seeded approach. That is something being used today by the, by the commercial deployments we have, for example, by LG Ericsson. Then you have a broadband light source that you put somewhere in the network, which actually seeds each ONU with a certain wavelength, and then using a reflective SOA or, in it, or an injection locked F Fabri Perot laser for, the, for modulating the uplink traffic. The other approach is to remove the BLS, the broadband light source, and instead inserting tunable lasers into the uh, own use. By that you can use, have a tunable laser adjusting to the right wavelength for each branch. The problem with uh, the tunable lasers is that they are normally manufactured or developed for transport networks with a slightly different cost profile than you have in an access network. So we need to, uh, to work with this to drive down the cost, and that is something Ericsson is contributing to in an EU project called GigaWAM where the aim is to develop uh, low-cost tunable lasers suitable for, for fiber access applications. Both the remotely seeded approach and the tunable laser approach is actually using one wa wavelength for downstream direction and another wavelength for uplink direction, which means two wavelengths per end user. So a very simple way to double the capacity of a WM pony is to use a method where you use the same wavelength for the uplink as well for the downlink direction. That is the method we call wavelength reuse. Basically here we're using a clever modulation of the optic carrier. So we can actually use the same wavelength for downlink and then we can remodulate that wavelength for the uplink traffic. A simple way to double the capacity of the MPON. Also this was actually relaxing the requirements of the other key component in the WMPON, the AWG, the arrayed waveguide grating. Another very interesting application is the node console in, in is the node consolidation. That is where operators are moving the central office further away from end users. WM PON with its longer reach, typically 40 to 100 kilometers with today's solution, is a very good candidate for these type of deployments. And lastly, but not least, WM PON will be very attractive in, in residential access, of course. Uh, but before we are there, we need to drive down the cost a bit of the ingoing components to have a more cost-effective solution something we are very working very actively with now. 
Uh, Ericsson is very committed to WDM PON and we are very active in standardization to form a global standard for WDM PON which will enable us to low, lower the cost of, of the ingoing components. So in summary, WDM PON is a perfect mix of a point-to-point -point topology with a point-to-multipoint or G-PON topology. The main challenge lies in driving down the cost of the colorless own use and to get the global accepted standardization. Thank you very much. I hope you found this interesting. Mm -hmm.